Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 24th of August 2011. We have the much anticipated return of Region 1263. Will it put on another dazzling fireworks display like it did a few weeks ago, or is it going to disappoint? But first, we would like to say thank you to all of those that sent a message of support and comfort as a result of the earthquake that Washington suffered uh, yesterday. We were very touched by all the messages of goodwill. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Our world is often blessed with sights that are stunning and beautiful. Many of them are rare and when seen can be misinterpreted as something supernatural or even extraterrestrial. For example, this beautiful image was taken in Ethiopia. So for today's trivia question, what is this phenomenon called and how is it formed? The answer will be given at the end. So let's take a look at solar activity. And we see in the last 48 hours we've only had one sea flare. And that only just made it. Otherwise the sun has been relatively quiet. Although interestingly the x-ray background has increased from the B2 to the B3 level. So let's take a look at the active regions and see if we can see what's going on. We currently have five numbered regions on the disk. So let's take a look at them individually. First region 1271, which is the, by far the largest, seems to have not changed a great deal in the last uh, two days, except for the fact that the trailer spot seems to have decayed quite significantly. Here's what uh, region 1272 looked like two days ago, and this is what it looks like today, and you can see that it's decayed quite a bit. Regions 1274 and 1275 have also de decayed. Here's what they were like a couple of days ago, and that this is what they are like today. Again, both regions have decayed both in area and strength over the last 48 hours. There were two regions trailing regions 1274 and 1275 that I pointed out two days ago. The southern one of those has been numbered region 1276 but is decaying rapidly also. However, the region trailing 1274 has decayed away completely. As I mentioned at the beginning, region 1263 has returned. It has not yet received its new number from NOAA, but you can see on the limb there is a big dark spot which is the leading spot of the region. And uh, as you'll see later in the coronal movie, there seems to be a lot more activity over the limb, so I'm expecting more spots to come in the next day or so. So overall, solar activity has been very quiet. We have lots of regions on the disk, which is why the sunspot number has gone up. However, they're all decaying, so that's why the activity level has gone down. Now there is the peculiar case of why the x-ray background seems to be increasing while the level of activity seems to be going down. I think that's purely due to the decay in the on-disk regions is being more than compensated for by the appearance of the new region 1263 over the northeast limb. We're not going to be able to discern much about the potential of region 1263 when it returns from the magnetic or optical data until the region has come more on the disk. So today I'd like you to concentrate on the, all the other regions and see if you can see how they're decaying and disappearing slowly. In the Transition Region movie, I would like you to take a look at the place where 1263 is coming over the limb. Notice how there's all these impulsive bursts coming out of it. Now that could be an indication that it's likely to give coronal mass ejections in the near future. In the low temperature coronal evolution, again concentrate on the location of region 1263. Watch the evolution of the, the large loop structures that are still currently behind the east limb. These must be massively tall to be able to be seen by us. In the high temperature coronal image from GOES, you can see that the coronal hole that's been affecting us is now right on the west limb. It's a little faint there, but it's still there. So that'll be moving soon past where it's geo-effective. There's another large coronal hole about this center, so in another three or four days that should probably be affecting us. And interestingly enough, you can see both polar coronal holes. Now there have been some discussions on uh, YouTube about whether the coronal holes have disappeared and we're already at solar maximum. Well it's clear from these images that they have not disappeared and so we're not yet at solar maximum. In the SOHO coronagraph data you can see there's been a fairly large coronal mass ejection off of the west limb towards the end of this sequence. Venus is now exiting the C2 field of view though will be visible in the C3 field of view for several weeks yet. As Mr. Silverwolf pointed out earlier today, there was a coronal mass ejection on the back side of the Sun. Here's an image of it from the stereo behind spacecraft. So in these images, the Earth is to the right. So this coronal mass ejection is moving away from the Earth and will not affect us. Now let's take a look at the solar wind. 
The temperature of the solar wind has remained relatively constant, while the velocity has increased to over 500 kilometers per second. This is the influence of that coronal hole, and that should be waning in the next 24 hours. However, the density of the solar wind is extraordinarily low, which means that this solar wind stream, although it's very fast, has hardly got any power in it, so it will not affect the Earth very greatly. The high energy electron flux seems to have dropped significantly in the last 48 hours, and as yet we still have not got a proton event. The auroral zone seems to have quieted down quite a bit in the last 48 hours. The KP index, although it briefly reached a level of 4, is now returned to 0. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B3 level, the sunspot number has risen to 81, radio sun intensity is up to 104 solar flux units, the solar wind speed has increased to over 500 kilometers per second, but with a very low density of less than one proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions can only be described as variable. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are likely, M flares are possible with the return of 1263, but I think X flares are unlikely. Sunspot numbers should remain high, CMEs remain likely, the solar wind speed should drop lower in the next 24 hours, but there's a very low probability that we're going to get a major geomagnetic storm in that time. From the composite coronal image you can see that most of region 1263 will be onto the disk by the end of today, and the next region due over is in the south and is probably two or three days behind the east limb. The answer to our trivia question is that the name of this sort of cloud formation is called a pileus iridescent cloud. That's a mouthful to describe the very simple thing that's going on here. All that is required is that the water droplets forming high in the atmosphere have a very similar size. Acting on mass, they act like a huge prism, each color being diffracted by a different amount, giving this uh, beautiful iridescent color scheme. It can be quite stunning when seen uh, unexpectedly. So that's it for today. And once again, thank you all for all your kind messages. Keep safe yourselves. Bye for now.